Good morning, Periscope. All right, good morning. I see we got some new folks on this morning with me. Good stuff. Oh, there's Latrice. Hey, good morning, lady. Hey, Dr. G, I see she's on. All right, good stuff, you guys. I know I'm a little late. Hey, Jamel Strong is on. I'm trying to do my scopes about 9, 9.30 in the morning, but uh, time got a little away from me this morning. But listen, you guys, welcome. I'm so glad to have you on my Periscope this morning. If this is your first time, uh, let me welcome you. And those of you that have been with me many times, you know that I only have one rule. And that is, if you greet me and put a dash with your first name so that I can greet you back properly. That's it. Hey, good to see you guys. Jennifer, Pastor Asher's on. Hello, Trimetria. Glad to see you. Uh, looks like Carol Dorch Wright is on. Bless you. Thank you. I'm glad you've been blessed by them. Hey, good morning, Tawanda. Hey, Byron. Good. Glad to see you guys on this morning. Zyron's on. Good stuff. Uh, yes, I am well rested. Good to see you, Tia. Hey, El Elder Geronda. She's on this morning. Hey, there's T. Marie. I see you. You guys, this is great. I'm excited to have you on this morning. And today we're going to be talking about, uh, I kind of themed this. Y'all like my theme, church chat? Um, let me know, uh, Lady Jocelyn, good, glad to have you on. Jacavius Pickett, good, glad to have you on this morning. Hey, Pastor Vernell, good, good, good. You guys, let me know if you like the theme this morning, church chat. We're going to talk about uh, how to know when you're really grown and ready to lead. Hey, Rhonda, glad to have you on this morning. Y'all see, let me get my necklace together here. <laughs> Thank you guys for the hearts. For those of you that may not be familiar with how the hearts work, it's very similar to um, Instagram. When you go on Instagram and like a picture on Periscope, if you hit the right-hand corner of your screen, it will generate hearts. And that lets the scoper, which is me, know that you are enjoying my content. I'm not one of those that begs for hearts all throughout my uh, scopes. I just want you, I want to earn them. I want you all to be blessed by the information. All right, good. So you guys are excited about the topic on today. Um, thank you guys. Um, I am Robin Weir. I always want to start off and introduce myself. Hey, Dr. Akers on. I am uh, the owner of the Wear Agency. I'm based in Atlanta, Georgia, but I am worldwide. I travel quite extensively and I work with uh, churches and pastors uh, and with one hat and then my other hat I'm a coach to entrepreneurs hey Ciara glad to have you on this morning uh, with my church hat I work with churches and pastors as a consultant doing church leadership workshops and working one-on-one -on -one even with churches helping them with marketing and branding social media and then of course church growth um, so today I've got my church hat on and we're going to be talking about you know pastor I'm grown how to know that you're ready to lead. Uh, I'm in this vein because I've got two engagements coming up where I'll be speaking. Um, I'll be the guest speaker at a church leadership uh, workshop. And so, um, good morning. I see cookies on. Glad to have you this morning, love. Um, so I just thought I'd share some of what uh, I've been studying and, and I'm going to present uh, at these upcoming uh, churches. But are y'all good? Give me a thumbs up if you guys are good and ready to go. I do that so that you guys have a second to get your notepads because I got some great information for you. I want you all to take some notes. And of course, if you're watching the replay, just want to remind you that you too can give some hearts uh, as you listen to the point. And then, of course, you guys can go watch this on YouTube uh, when it's over so you can share it with your pastors or other ministry leaders moving forward. So don't want you to worry. Uh, this is going to be good, and you're going to want to share it. Speaking of sharing, sharing is caring, right? And I teach you guys that I want you to share scopes that are good. This is one that's going to be good. So if you're on an iPhone device, all you have to do is swipe to the right. Let me do it this way so it's, it's showing on the right side. Hey, Joanna, swipe to the right if you're on an iPhone device, and um, swipe up if you are on an Android and that way you can invite people to join the scope before I get started. Glad to see we got people on from Wichita. Again, I only have one rule, and that is if you greet me, if you would, put a dash and your first name so that I can greet you properly. That's it. That's the hospitality in me. I love uh, treating people nice and, and serving others. Thank you guys for the hearts. I see them coming. 
All right, you guys. I hope you got your... Um, Oh, good, Pastor Morris. Glad to have you on. Hope you got your uh, iPads or your notepads, your pens, because uh, you guys see, look, I got two pages, not one, but two pages of information. Thank you, Shannon. Hey, Matthew Grady. Hey, Tronda. Glad to have you on. Hey, Dante. Okay, I am going to, um, Marsha's on good. My scope scribe's on. Um, I'm going to teach. This is going to be about a 20-minute scope, you guys. So, want to let you know i like to give you a heads up so you can kind of plan accordingly good angie's on from tennessee i am going to go through my points and um oh let me show you guys i got my little red cup i should have like a diva cup shouldn't i but you know i need to uh, make sure i um hydrate as i teach because i got a lot of content so let me go ahead and get ready okay good all right <laughs> I'm going to get a diva cup. Okay, I'm going to have to look for one. You guys, maybe you can um, email me links to somebody on Etsy that does customize. I like to have bling, and I like to have my name. I like to have things personalized. So if you see something, let your girl know. Absolutely, my Sara is pink and green in the house. I love red and white, too, though. Got to give love to my Deltas. And blue and white, my Zetas. Look, I got to cover everybody, right? All right, so let's get started, you guys. Pastor, I'm grown. How to know you're ready to lead um now as i give these points and i'm glad my delta sisters are on here as i give these points i'm going to go through them and then i'll gladly take questions all right how do you know that you're really ready to lead you know a lot of us think that uh, we should be given opportunities of leadership based on longevity of, of being a member um on loyalty um on relationship even we feel like um you know uh we just should be able to lead right so what i want to do is to help you understand that though sometimes you will be asked to lead based on longevity based on loyalty uh based on relationship um it may or may not be any of those reasons. It may be because you possess these qualities. Number one, you have an open mind. My scope scribe, if you put up having an open mind, all right? You have to have an open mind. The scripture teaches us that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, right? Your soul strength, and mind. You can't decide that you know everything, that you're not teachable at this moment, right? That because you've got longevity, seniority, and relationship, that you don't have to have an open mind to whomever your leaders put in place. There's a reason, if we really believe that our leaders hear from God, that they are God's man, God's woman, we have to, listen, we have to be focused on having an open mind. Number two, we have to have a heart to serve the vision, not a heart of division, revision, or collision. Number two, we have to have a heart to serve the vision, not a heart of revision, division, or collision all right so my second point we have to have a heart to serve the vision so not a heart of division you can't decide that your vision is what should be implemented there's only one vision in the house when there's more than one vision there's division right and you don't have the right to revise the vision nor do you want to cause collision. And collision is caused when you go against the vision of the house. Now, I'm not saying God doesn't speak to you, that God doesn't give you um, ideas, creative ideas, what he inventions, all of that, and that you shouldn't go and talk those over with your pastor. Absolutely. But there's timing. It's called timing. And so you have to follow the vision of the house. If you guys just hold your questions, I promise you I'm going to come back. I'm going to answer them. Number three is you have to humble yourself. 
again, kind of goes back to point number one about having an open mind, but you got to humble yourself. Connect with an elder that has wisdom and knowledge. I have quite a few. Uh, I, I had a situation this morning that I called an elder, a senior person in my life and said, I need wise counsel. You should always have an elder person or an, an elder doesn't mean necessarily age. It means somebody that has wisdom and knowledge. Okay. And you're open to them rebuking you. And absolutely. When I called this elder, we spoke through what my opportunity was. They asked me some pointed questions that I had to answer because I had to make sure I wasn't dealing with this situation in my flesh. Alrighty. So we've got, um, we've got three good points this morning. Have an open mind, have a heart to serve the vision and let me block. You guys know I put the blocker on in a heartbeat, have an open mind, have a heart to serve the vision and humble yourself to connect with an elder. Let me tell you, let me put a little, um, a uh, uh, pin there. Um, you guys, Scope has what they call trolls. And so people get on periscopes that are populated with a lot of people. I have like six, 700 people on my scopes. And so they, they say things and they want to draw attention to themselves, but I am the blocking queen. And so what they get on my scopes and say crazy things, I block them. So that's what you're seeing. All right. So point number four is that um, you have to know your inspiration for why you want to lead. Why is it that, absolutely, why is it, what is your why? What is your inspiration for why you want to serve as a leader in ministry? Think about it. If you don't know your why, you will wreak havoc. Because you'll agree to assignments, but you won't, you don't want to be held accountable. You won't show up on time. You won't follow direction. Uh, you won't give good direction because you don't understand your why. All right. Um, because once you know your why, you will uh, sit in a hallway serving a leader that is in a meeting or that is in a dinner that you're not invited to. For two hours, this is true. True story. I um, I'm a meeting planner by profession, and I've I've worked in church. I've worked in ministry all my life, and um, I put together a women's conference in the Bahamas. And so we were at the beautiful Atlantis Resort. Y'all give me some hearts if you know the Atlantis uh, Resort. It is absolutely beautiful. And so um, we had had an amazing session, had some, you know, really big name preachers. If I shared the names, you guys would know them all, but that's not really relevant to my story. Now, I was the meeting planner. I was not an armor bearer, but I was the meeting planner. And so, yay, my Bahamas Connects are on. So after the worship service that night, we had a repast or a dinner. And so I, it was my job as part of being the meeting planner you know, not only to put the event, all the, the conference together, but to put the dinners together as well. So I put together this, you know, private repast for the host, as well as the guest speakers and other VIPs. But as the meeting planner, I was not expected nor invited to have a seat at the table. Now, I was exhausted. I was hungry. I had been working all day. This was a women's conference. I had been uh, in the Bahamas, I think at this point, uh, it was a three week period. The conference was in the middle. So I'd been there like seven or eight days and my feet had not touched sand. So, you know, it wasn't really like I was in the Bahamas, right? It was just like I was at a hotel. So anyway, my guests went in, they had dinner and that service lasted, that, that dinner, that repast lasted for not one, but two hours. Um, I wish Tracy Hobbs was on Darwin Hobbs wife. She and I were there together and, uh, we were so tired. You know, when you get tired, you get silly and you just start laughing. We were silly tired. We were laughing and giggling and we literally were sitting on the floor in the hallway waiting on our guests to come out of that dinner. But you know what? Um, because I knew my inspiration of serving 
you literally, I didn't have any uh, challenges about sitting in that hallway, right? And so I didn't go run and tell it that, oh my goodness, you know, they had this dinner and, um, you know, I didn't get to eat. You know, none of that was anybody's business, right? It was just a part of the assignment. But because I knew my inspiration, I was called to serve. I know that in serving, I'll be blessed. I know that greatness comes from being tried and gone through the fire. I also know that uh, my inspiration is that I can connect with others. Iron sharpens iron. You know, because I know my why, I get seated next to people I probably never, ever meet. And I learn things that I probably never, ever would have learned. Right? So don't ever just say, okay, well, I'll just do whatever. No, not at all. You must know your why so that your purpose is, is or excuse me, you're planning for your purpose. Right? Good, good, good. So I know what my ultimate purpose is. So I have a plan to help me get there. So that's what I mean by that, that I'm planning for my purpose. All right, good. I hope you're enjoying this. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Number five is determination. Yeah, you understand that you are determined when you serve to do it God's way. There's no shortcuts. You could try a shortcut, but it won't work. You have to be determined to do it God's way way. If you don't, you're going to have to learn the lesson all over again, maybe a different way, but it is going to be the same lesson. If that resonates with you, give me some hearts. Lord knows I have had to learn about being determined about doing things God's way, God's way, God's timing, God's people even. Absolutely. Yes. Give me thumbs up. Give me hearts. If that, uh, connects with you, because this is what happens. Um, I think about Daniel uh, when uh, when the Babylonian, uh, you know, the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar, you know, kidnapped him and wanted him, you know, to be uh, wanted him to serve, bow down and serve him. He was determined that he was going to do things God's way. It didn't matter what situation he was placed in. You know, he was he was told, you know, you're going to you're going to eat the king's meat. You're going to eat the best. And he said, no, you know what? I'll, I'll fast first. And he ended up having more strength than those that had been fed from the king's table. See, you've got to have that kind of determination. All right. Good. Thank you so much for the hearts. All right. Ooh, the next one is, is, is hard, but it is necessary. Honesty. Let's talk about that. You're grown. If you say you're grown and you're ready to be a leader, then you have to be able to to deal with honesty about yourself, about how others see you. Um, people often say that, um, oh Lord, now I'm drawing a blank, but, um, uh, oh, it'll come to me in just a second. But the, the scripture says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So when situations are presented to you, how you respond is because of what's inside of you. So if you think everybody's a cheat, everybody's going to steal, you know, why do you have those kind of thoughts? Well, it's because that's what's inside of you. You have to take ownership of that. And when people step to you and, and show you you, oh, buddy, you got to be willing to look in that mirror and deal with it. Absolutely. Give me some hearts if that works for you. I'm telling you, honesty. You must be honest with yourself. Are you the cause of your own destruction? Let me let that resonate with you. Are you the cause of your own destruction? Yeah. You got to be honest with yourself. You know if you run late all the time. No, you're not going to be used in, in Sunday service if you're late all the time. You can't be counted on, right? You make uh, pledges that you don't keep. Yeah, maybe that's why you're saying you're grown, but you're not being selected for leadership. Yeah. So as a man thinketh, come on, y'all, in his heart, so is he. You guys, you got to be 
real with yourself. You've got to be real with yourself. You will grow. I think, you know, when you deal with, um, out, uh, when you go to like, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous and those kind of places, they always say that the ability to admit what your issue is first is the first step of your healing. And so, yeah, maybe in the past or a previous church or previous experience, you were wrong, but you got to let that go. Don't let the past define your future. So deal with what's inside of your heart. That's why I purposefully say, I don't want to say things in a negative light. I say things in a positive light. I trust people. I give people the benefit of the doubt. Because you know what? There's, there is a such thing as being accomplished and getting things done, but leaving dead bodies all over the place. You don't want to be that type of leader. Oh boy, she gets the job done, but people are dead after they fool with her. You don't want dead bodies all over the place after they've encountered your leadership. Think about that. Yeah. How do you know if you're leaving dead bodies all over the place? People won't sign up to be on committees with you. People don't want to go and eat with you. People don't call you to go to the movies. Come on now. I'm telling you. Absolutely. You guys have to understand that as a leader, you must be honest with yourself. And this is one of my favorite things about being honest is uh, when, when I'm in church and the pastor says that there's a special initiative and we've got to, um, you know, do another offering or, or something like that. Well, I purpose that I'm going to be the first or one of the first to give. Because I understand the principle of sowing and reaping. But some of us are not honest with ourselves. And so we won't give because we're afraid that, um, or we process in our minds that we don't like what they're going to do with the offering. Well, what they're going to do with it is between them and God. I promise you, God's going to hold them accountable. So as long as you give from a right place, the word says he loves a cheerful giver. You give from the right place, the scripture works. So you sow, you reap. Don't get tricked out of your harvest. Y'all fall's about to come in the natural. So for things that you planted in the winter, in the natural, the harvest is coming in the fall. Well, in the spirit, what have you planted? Is it going to harvest in season? Come on, you guys. I love it. I love it. I love it. You've got to remember that what happens to your seed once it's planted in the ground is out of your control. Once you plant your seed in the, in the ground, in the dirt, it's out of your control. All right? So, um, how was that, you guys? I hope that you enjoyed those points. I had a few more, but I see people are making points and asking questions. So, I'm going to stop right there. I've got a full day today. Got to get to my office. I'm here in my, um, I'm here in my home office. And so, um, I wanted to get to you guys, though, before um, I, things got, my day got carried away. I got a couple of clients. I got some projects due today. Somebody said, when will we get the remaining points? Um, I'll share them. I'm not sure when, but I just do these as I'm led. Um, you're so sweet. So you guys, what points really blessed you? What points really blessed you? You guys tickle me. Um, you guys tickle me about these blocks, but I tell you, I'm not fooling with no trolls. I am not fooling with them. Um, when am I coming back? I'm not for sure. Uh, I had thought I would come back yesterday at three, but I wasn't able to. Good. The honesty point. Good. Uh, the ones about leadership. Good. All right. Somebody said all of them. Good. Leading from the right place. Good, good, good. Listen, you guys, I love it. I love it. Humble yourself and know your purpose. Determination blessed me. Thank you, L'Oreal. Good. Latrice said, know your why. You know, sometimes you guys, um, uh, we serve just to be active, just to be doing something. But you all know that um, to just be doing something doesn't mean you're productive. Right? You cannot 
say, ah, you know, I showed up. So, you know, God is pleased. No, God wants sacrifice. He's got to get the glory out of what we sacrifice to do for him. So that's why I serve. That's why I lead. And I do it to be a blessing, right? All right, you guys. Somebody said habits don't count. That's funny. Sometimes a good idea is not necessarily a God idea. That's absolutely right. Yes, absolutely right. Thank you guys for the hearts. So real quickly, because my scope scribe wasn't, um, I think I'm not sure if I lost my scope scribe. I was so busy teaching, but have an open mind, right? You don't know everything. I don't care if you've been in that church for 40 years. God can send somebody that is newly saved yesterday. And they don't even know how many books are in the Bible. But he can bring them in with revelation that could turn your church upside down. So have an open mind as to whom God uh, uses. Good. Latrice is my scope scribe. Have a heart to serve the vision. Not a heart of division, revision, or collision. Uh, number three, humble yourself to connect with an elder. You need somebody with wisdom and knowledge that can help you. Um, number four, inspiration. You've got to know your why. You've got to know why you serve. Number five is determination. You've got to be determined to do it God's way. And then number six was honesty. All right? Being honest with yourself. Stretch yourself. I had somebody come up to me in church on Sunday. I lead the singles at my church. And she said, you know what? Um, I know that I'm supposed to be more involved with the singles. So if you would, hold me accountable because I really want to come. I really want to connect. A lot of times why we don't want to be honest with ourselves is because uh, of the sin that's going on in our lives. But you guys, um, yes, I, I don't want you to be living in sin. I'm not saying that. So listen to what I'm about to say closely. But I would rather you come while you're in sin so I can help you get delivered. Let me help you walk your way out of it. I don't want you to think that you've got the stamina and the strength to get yourself out of that stronghold that the enemy has got you in. There are myself and others that have wisdom, that have knowledge, that have lived through some things. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm single, but I was married. I, so that means I'm single now. So that means I'm divorced. So I have a little bit of experience when it comes to being divorced, but, but going through it and keeping my mind, keeping my finances and still being able to speak to my ex. So if you're going through a situation like that, you'd want to connect with somebody like me. Cause why would you want to be bitter and, and, you know, go through drama. Sometimes things don't work out. It's okay. It is okay. So, um, you want to connect with people that can help you. So, uh, be honest with yourself. Yes. And we, as those that are seasoned, you know, we, we, we want you to trust that we're not going to go run and tell all your business that you share with us, that you come and you ask us to pray with you, to stand in agreement for what you're believing for. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not going to go run and tell it. That's not my place. The only person I need to tell it to already knows that's God. All right. So good. You guys got me preaching. I told you all. Um, I'm not, I'm just teaching this morning, right? I'm just teaching this morning. So any questions? Somebody says, I definitely need you in my life. You are teaching real life today. Oh, bless you, Rhonda. See, that lets me know that it was uh, worth it. I was, it was on point for me to put this together for you all today. There's my, my girl, Latrice. Thank you, my scope scribe. Absolutely. Hey, Nate, good to see you. Yeah, I'm always transparent. I told you guys, if you've been on with me before, I, it is my intention to be transparent. I don't want you to make the mistakes I've made. I've proven that they don't work. Now that that's a, that's a uh, <laughs> that's an offering right there, amen. <clears throat> yeah. Look, let me get my red cup, y'all. All right. <clears throat> so, um, you know, because that's bondage when you hold things in uh, from your past that you're embarrassed about. You need to get delivered so you can get free. All right? 
You all need to get delivered so you can be free. There's nothing like freedom. I can remember when I first got credit card. And boy, I just, whoo, because I love to shop and I still love to shop. But I just would shop, shop, shop. You know, I knew Macy's had a one-day sale every Tuesday, but I acted like it was a big revelation, a big news announcement every week. I'd show up, and i just shop, shop, shop. And then, you know, one day I realized that I had created this mound of debt. And that debt put me in bondage. And I told myself, I promised myself, once I got out of this debt, I would never do this again. Well, I want you to know that I got out of debt, a couple years passed, and I did it again. I sure did. The go-to girl here, you know, sharp, wise, all of that. But I did it again. I told you I got to be transparent. So I said, okay, Lord, obviously I took my focus off of one of my issues. So... Same thing, I got myself out of debt. I took on a second job purposefully so I could pay off that debt. I got out of debt a second time. And then I said, now I'm only going to pay with cash. So if I can't buy it with cash, <clears throat> I won't have it. And so thank God that has been my truth for like the past three years, I think, something like that. So, um, but but thank God that I was honest enough, uh, I, I sought help, um, and then I share that testimony with others. I know that, you know, and social media, oh my God, you guys, social media breeds comparison. It just breeds comparison. You know, that's why, I mean, I like Instagram, but I don't love it. Because I really call it aftergram. My scope scribe put up that. Instagram equals aftergram. It should really be called aftergram. Because people only, not all people, <clears throat> but most people, he said it took it more than two times, but <clears throat> most people only post pictures after they've taken that picture five or six times. They post five or different way, five different ways. They've added a filter. They changed the lighting. And so it's after they've done all of that that they post the picture to Instagram. So then me with my crazy self, when I see them in person, I'm looking at them like, well, where did the other half of you come from? Because all the pictures I see on Instagram, there's only half of you, right? And what happens, unfortunately, and again, I'm a coach. So I work with entrepreneurs. I met with two yesterday. They say, you know, well, you know, how do I, um, how do I achieve this, this, and this? I tell them, stop that. No, we're not setting benchmarks for achievement. We're setting benchmarks for completion. When you complete assignments, success will follow. Because see, when you set benchmarks of achievement, Lord have mercy, the enemy will get in your head and you will kill, steal, and destroy, which is what he does. To try to reach an achievement. I don't want you to do that. I want you to go through the process and complete the steps so that you learn the lesson. So that you gain the experience. Right? All right. So, um, so don't get caught up in comparing yourself. You know, social media, again, it's a great tool like this to teach. Um, but don't go comparing yourself to, to others. Y'all, I have been to churches that I saw online. Thank you. Y'all hear my mother talking to me. <laughs> um, but I have been to churches that I've seen online. And I'm like, hmm. Now, all their marketing materials looks like they had about, you know, a thousand people in here. Why are there only 10 people here for this service? So you got to be careful. People stage pictures, you know, all of that stuff. Um, Y'all speaking to my mom, that is so funny. You all know, maybe I have or have not shared this, but my parents have been married 57 years. And so they live with me. So I'm honored to get to take care of them and make sure that they're happy and um, they're both in great health. And so um, we have a great time uh, here living in my house. And so um, that's my assignment 
in this season of my life and I gladly accept it. So if you go on my Instagram, you'll see me. I take pictures with them all the time. But anyway, uh, let me get back to the subject. Good. I'm glad this is helping you all. I will, Cousin Tronda. That's really my cousin, you guys. Uh, somebody says, what happens when there's no support or appreciation for leadership? You just got to pray. You know, I can't answer and give you guys all the steps on these uh, periscopes, but um, you have to understand that prayer is what changes things. It's not you demanding a meeting with the pastor and beating things over their head. And, you know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't go and speak to the pastor. I'm not saying that at all. But <clears throat> remember, there is just one vision, though. And I said this. My uh, second point was a heart to serve division, not a heart of division, revision, or collision. All right. So I hope that helped you. All right, you guys, if these points helped you, you enjoyed my Periscope on today. You can give me some hearts. I appreciate it. Just let me know that I'm on the right track. I'm excited today when I get to my office. I'm going to be recording a couple of videos and I'm um, working on a website for a client. And uh, let me see. I've got a conference coming up that my team is working on for a client. So we're working on some of that. Whew, we got a lot going on on today. So I um, also got another webinar that I'll be announcing pretty soon. So if you haven't already, please go to thewareagency.com, my scope scribe, if you put that out for me, thewareagency.com, and you can join my email list and get a free download, 10 Easy Strategies to Grow Your Church. That will add you to my email list, and you'll get the notification um, about um, my upcoming webinar. Yes, you can, L'Oreal. I cannot wait. Thank you, uh, Byron. I got a new scope scribe today. I'm looking so forward to it now. Good. I'm glad you're looking at my Facebook. All my social media is the same, at Robin M. Ware. I look forward to being back on with you guys. I don't know if it'll be today. As I said, I got a really full day on today and even tomorrow, but I'm going to try uh, tomorrow morning. What's tomorrow? Friday? Um, I'll probably be back on closer to, uh, 1030. Yeah. Cause I got a full morning as well. Uh, of course, scope queen. Thank you so much. That's where you can go and get my two eBooks, uh, periscope with a purpose, which is for churches and then periscope, uh, for profit, which is for entrepreneurs. All right. Now you guys going to stop getting on my scopes and trying to give me grief about, uh, faith-based people wanting to make money. The devil is a lie. Go find somebody's broke scope. My scopes aren't broke. So if you broke minded, don't get on my scopes. All right. I'm going to leave you all with that. God bless you. All right. Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> you know, you just, I'm telling you, you guys, you've got to help people grow and be better. Love you. Love you. Love you so much. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye.